mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So the question here in Romans 4 is, what shall we say about Abraham? It's a simple question, I suppose, but it uh, gets pretty complicated here in Romans 4 and lots uh, going on in there. But uh, simply it is, what is, uh, what is it about Abraham? How was Abraham justified? Uh, that's the question that Romans 4 asks. And so let's think a second, what does it mean to be justified? To be justified means to be uh, declared righteous, to be uh, declared to be in relationship with God, to be made a part of God's family. So how was it <clears throat> that Abraham was justified? How was he made to be right with God? How was it that Abraham came to be a part of God's family? There's really only two possibilities, only two ways that it could possibly happen, and one would be by works. By doing the things that God calls us to do, by living a righteous and holy life, and uh, in order to do it by works, one would have to do it perfectly, absolutely perfectly. Have you ever uh, watched the Olympics and uh, seen the high divers go down? It's something I could never do, that's for sure. And uh, it's, it's fun to watch them. They tumble three times and twist twice, and then you're supposed to go into the water straight in so there's almost no splash. And it's fun to watch as the commentators are, are watching the, uh, the swimmer, or the diver, I should say, and they'll comment as the, the dive is going on, oh, he did that very well, or uh, that was a little bit of a problem there, and that kind of thing. And then after the dive, the commentator goes on a little bit and finally gives his evaluation of what he thinks the dive was worth. But then you finally see the official uh, markings. First one holds up 8.4, second one 7.6, and so forth. And when it's a really good dive, the commentator gets very excited. Oh, that's got to be at least a 9. And then come the official scores, 9.7, 9.6, 9.7. Oh, man, everybody's amazed at what a great dive that was. But how rare it is when there's a perfect dive. And the commentator is practically speechless, which is a big surprise. That was perfect. I couldn't see anything wrong with it. And then the, they hold up their official markings, 10.0. 10.0, 10.0, a perfect dive. If Abraham could have been saved by works, he would have had to have all 10.0s, all perfection. Not just when he reached the pinnacle of his life, but all the way through. <clears throat> all the way he would have had to been perfect his entire life. Now, uh, we actually know quite a bit about Abraham because of what uh, has been written in scriptures about him, especially in Genesis. There's quite a bit about Abraham there elsewhere, too. Uh, interestingly, we don't even meet Abraham until he's 75 years old. But still, we learn plenty about Abraham, and we hear about a number of sins that Abraham did. Because he sinned, it's clear his life was not all 10.0s. He weren't even close. There's no way that Abraham could have been saved by works. If he had been saved by works, he'd, he would have a boast. Oh, he'd have something to boast about. Not before God, but he would have a boast because it would have been a perfect life. But that's impossible. And so the scripture says, what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Credited. Not something that was earned. Now it goes on to say, now when a man works, <clears throat> his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. When you work for something and you earn it, what you receive is not a gift. It's what's owed to you. It's an obligation. However, verse 5, to the man who does not work but trusts God who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. His faith is this gift that God gives. 
And that is where the righteousness comes from. That's where the justification comes from. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works, with no works at all. This is all a gift of God that Abraham has been made to be part of God's family. It's a gift. And how God gives. He gives and gives and gives. God gives so much. Think about how Jesus gives. He gives up heaven for us. He gives up all the joys of heaven, the perfection of heaven, the praise of heaven. He comes to earth and is so humiliated he's laid in a manger of all places, which is not even the end of his humiliation, of course. He gives and gives. Jesus gives healing to the hurting. Jesus gives compassion to those who feel lost. Jesus gives love to all. Jesus is the one who gives and gives and gives. He gives his back (coughs) to the whip. He gives his head and shoulders and arms to those who beat him with a rod. Jesus gives his hands and feet to be nailed. He gives his life so that we can have everlasting life with God. He gives. It's all a free gift to us. A free gift from God is this justification that's being made a part of God's family. Freely given to us. Grace, a free gift to us. But some will say, Well, it's not completely a free gift. Because you've got to do something. They'll say, you have to at least choose to believe. You've got to do that at least, they'll say. And that logic is so twisted. So very twisted. We don't choose God. God chooses us. God is the one who, with a completely free gift, with nothing on our part, God completely does it for us. He gives us all that we need. He gives us grace. He makes us to be a part of his family, part of his loving family. Being part of a loving family is not always something easy for some people to understand, because I know some folks have not been uh, privileged to be able to be a part of a loving family growing up. But as an analogy of how God brings us into his family, consider one loving family. After I was born, my parents brought me home from the hospital. I was completely unaware of what was going on. My parents uh, clothed me, they fed me, they diapered me, they cuddled me, they loved me. As I grew up, they continued to feed me, no small thing in my case. They continued to feed me, they clothed me, paid for all my expenses, whether they be medical expenses or educational expenses. They paid for the whole thing. They would, uh, at times, prod me or encourage me. They always loved me. Now, when was it that I became a part of that family? Was it when I came home from the hospital? Or was it when I was born? No, it was even before that. Even before my parents knew that I had been conceived, I was a part of the family. Never a question about it. I belonged. And what did I do to become a part of that family? Not one single thing. There's nothing I could do. <clears throat> nothing I needed to do. I was a part of the family because I was. I didn't do anything. Now it's true, as I grew up, there were um, some expectations that my parents had of me. Some things they expected me to do, tasks or chores that needed to be done, as it happens in many families. 
And that was the expectation. And uh, if I <coughs> didn't comply, I would learn to comply, right? You know, it, it would got to the point where you, you do those things because you're part of the family. Was doing those tasks or doing those chores, is that what made me part of the family? No, no way. I was already a part of the family. I belonged. I did that because I was a part of the family. Our Lord uh, himself has made us to be a part of his family. Whether it was when you were baptized or brought to faith as you heard God's word. When, uh, when you were brought to faith, the Holy Spirit made you to be a part of God's family. There was not a thing you could do, to put it in differently, not a thing you needed to do to be a part of God's family. God did that for you. He graciously did that for you when he gave you faith. Even faith itself is a gift. The Bible makes it very clear. Faith is a gift. It's not something we choose. It's given to us. And as a part of God's family, there are certain expectations. God uh, has expectations of us and the things that we are to be doing. But doing those things doesn't make us a part of God's family. We already are. We belong to the most loving family of all, to God himself. You can't do anything to add to it. You can't do anything to earn being a part of God's family. As a matter of fact, no one can ever tell you you have not done enough to be a part of the family of God because God has done it all. You are God's child. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.